So in today's lesson, we're going to have a quick overview of the toolbox project. So we can see here in our working drawing, uh, the overall dimensions for our toolbox project. So these are the dimensions that we will use when we come to measure our assembly tolerances. So our overall length will be 348, our overall width will be 140, and our overall height will be 200 millimetres. I have here an example from a previous year. So this is what the finished project will look like. And in today's lesson, what we're going to do is label each of our component parts and mark them with the face side and face edge symbol. So our component parts will include the square piece of timber, which will be turned into the handle. There is the piece of MDF, which will be used as our base. We have two longer pieces of red pine, and these are going to form the sides of the toolbox. So we've got two of those. We have a smaller, thinner piece of red pine here, which will be used as the insert between the two sides. And then finally, we have our two end pieces as well. Okay, so what we're going to do today is mark all of these with the face side and face edge symbol, and we'll mark them, um, label up each part so we know which is which. So if we begin with the end pieces here, nice and simple, work out which side is the, or rather which edge is the planed edge, which one's the smooth one, so that I can mark it as the face. We'll do that here. That's the face side. Face edge. Same here. Face side, face edge. Before I put these to the side, I'm going to label these up as left and right. Okay, these are the outside pieces. Now, one of the common features of this particular component when this timber is cut and left for too long, sometimes it can warp, particularly um, as you can see here, it's cupping, sort of forming a sort of C shape, almost, that way. So it's cupped slightly, um, but that shouldn't be too much of an issue for us. It's not um, too severe. But it's something to be aware of, that your end pieces may have cupped. They may have warped slightly. Um, so for just now, I can mark this one up as the right. And this one here as the left. Like so. Just gonna put them out to the side. I've got my inserts. I'll just mark that up with the face side and face edge as well. Mark that up as insert. Like so. Labeled up off to the side. We then have our two sides, which again I'll mark the face side and face edge on, like so. So these two. And remember, the reason we are marking the face side and face edge on every piece of timber are these are the only sides that a marking out tool should be touching, as in the face of a marking out tool should only touch the face side or the face edge. Of a piece of timber. We have our base. Uh, this is the one piece that I'm not going to mark the face side and face edge on. I'll just mark this up as base. Like so. And we have the square piece which we're going to turn into the handle. Again, I won't mark this one with the face side or face edge, um, but I can just for Clarity, label it up as handle, like so. So, face side and face edge has been marked on all pieces of timber. I have labelled each piece of timber so I know which piece I'm referring to. In fact, two pieces that I forgot to label the first time round were my sides. Now, if we refer to the working drawing, we can see that the sides are going to be marked out to accommodate the through housing joint. So the right side has the through housing joint towards the right end, and the left side, the through housing joint is towards the left end. 
Okay, so if I'm looking at my two pieces of timber, I want to make sure that I can avoid any knots in the timber if possible uh, to make cutting these joints a little easier. So on this top piece, for example, this knot here is probably going to be just a bit too close when I come to mark out the through housing joint if I was to mark it on the right hand side. So I'll make this one my left side because on the left end there are no knots that are going to interfere with me cutting that joint. So this one is left side, like so. And then this one, by default, will be right side. Okay. Now, as you can see, there is still a knot on the right side of this piece of timber. If I was to take my steel rule and measure, according to the dimensions in the working drawing, this knot is not going to interfere with the position that I'll be marking out and cutting the through housing joint. So that's always something worth checking out, is having a look at the timber, seeing if there's any knots that you need to be aware of, see if they're going to be in the position where you think you might be marking out and cutting a joint, and if they are, try to avoid that, try to mark it out potentially on the opposite end of the timber. Now that's going to come into play when we look at our end pieces as well, the right and the left end pieces. We're going to have a through housing joint across the bottom and we're going to want to avoid any knots there as well. So the left piece here, you can see I've got a knot at the top, that's fine. Uh, that's not going to interfere when I mark out and cut the through housing joint across the bottom. On the right side here, this knot may interfere. I can always check that with my steel rule when I come to mark this out. And if I think that it is, I'll simply turn it around and mark it down here. That's what I'll do. So we've now marked every piece of timber with the face side and face edge symbol and we have labelled each piece according to the work and drawing um, to make our lives a bit easier when it comes to referring to them. So in our next lesson, we're going to mark out the end pieces. So we're going to mark out the, re the required joints on the two end pieces of timber.